Oh, Mortarian, Mortarian, where do we start with you, boy? Morty's the kind of fellow who operates under the impression that he's far more complicated than he actually is. I'm sure we've all met a few people like this in our lives. The vast majority of the Emperor's traitorous sons, to, to be quite frank, the vast majority of the loyal ones too, are raging hypocrites. However, Morty saw fit to become chief among them in that regard. Whereas his brothers in the 20th Legion make a habit of lying to everyone else, Morty is dedicated to lying to himself. Better yet, he's so dumb he believes every word of it. While everyone else fights to prove that they aren't the monsters others consider them to be, Morty is free from such struggles. This is because he's convinced himself that literally anyone besides him has to be the cause of all of his problems. Whereas Superman has kryptonite, Mortarian's greatest weakness is personal responsibility. Oh, and the Grim Reaper is currently in litigation against him for stealing his whole flow. Morty begins his story being incredibly cool, very Robin Hood-like in demeanor. Upon the toxin-coated, war-torn, steampunk planet of Barbarus, he was adopted by an extremely powerful warlord that was incredibly adept in magic. For the foreseeable future, we're calling him Wizdad. So, Wizdad was looking to make a weapon out of this kid, and thus proceeded to pour all resources available into him. He gets smarter, stronger, bigger, more resourceful, better at fighting, the whole deal. The only problem for Wizdad here was the developing sense of justice. Turns out, the more you educate someone, the more they realize that tyrants are a blight upon society and need to be eradicated. Morty would start small, helping out the townsfolk by killing local despots. He'd also build them the occasional house and air purifier so they wouldn't immediately asphyxiate upon leaving said home. Everywhere he went, he gathered volunteers to help with his purging of the various fascistic influences that ruled the countryside. Eventually, this led him to the biggest of bads, Old Wizdad himself, which is when his actual father showed up. Okay, kids, that's the end of Cool Mortarian. His existence past this will consist of nonsensical whining with a dash of self-righteousness that is entirely unearned. Morty marches on up to Wizdad's yard, and his boys tell him he's definitely not ready for that smoke yet, so he turned around. When he got back, nobody was cheering him on, having assumed that he won, and he got all sour about it for some reason. Yep, you heard right. He bailed on a fight and got upset that nobody was celebrating when he got back. The reason being, the townsfolk were transfixed upon a magnificent stranger claiming he could deliver the world into an age of prosperity. Obviously, this was the Emperor of Mankind arriving in his typical ornate fashion. Morty found the idea that anyone but him could help was unacceptable and demanded he leave. The Emperor instead cut a deal with the young dipshit. He can go try to beat his dad alone, but if he fails, He's got to work for the Emperor. To make a long story short, about half an hour later, Toxins have Morty lying naked on the ground in the fetal position, coughing up his own lungs, as Wizdad is about to jam a spear into his forehead. There is no confusion about this whatsoever. He was going to die. About a split second before his end, the Emperor intercepted Wizdad's attack and slammed a flaming sword straight through his chest, killing him and saving his ungrateful son's life. But why did I choose the word ungrateful? Well, that's because from this moment forward, Morty would hate the Emperor with all the fury his little pea pick and heart could muster. Yeah, I know, I really wish I was lying here, but the reality is, Morty's bone-deep hatred for his father is derived from him saving the pathetic, weak-wristed man-child's life. We shall now discuss his legion and the lead up to them turning to chaos for the future civil war, because if I stay on that topic for too long, it's just going to be me cussing him out for 15 minutes, which honestly, uh, this still may turn into. 90% of what happens after being rescued from Barbarus should have looked like a series of fluorescent red flags being stabbed into the Emperor's abdomen. However, he would just ignore the hell out of him. Renaming his legion to the Death Guard, these boys would certainly live up to that name in full. Fighting a member of the Death Guard was like trying to kill someone who was already dead. These big fucks simply do not stay down. Even by Space Marine standards, they were so incredibly durable. They would take advantage of this durability by forcing wars of attrition upon the enemy. A common tactic would be outright chemical warfare, the effectiveness of which Morty had learned growing up. This is pretty standard even for their current combat practices today. 
The hallmark of the Death Guard is the longer this fight goes, the shittier your existence is going to be. If you cannot kill them fast, you cannot kill them at all. Now once again, apart from the nerve gas, that sounds cool as hell, so what's the issue? Don't you worry, my sweet summer child. I'll enlighten you. The problem is, Morty's a little baby bag, baby bag, baby bag, baby bag bitch, okay? Mortarian sends his days upon Barbarus, hated two things with all of his soon-to-be engraved heart. These hatreds were of tyrants and psychers, like Wizdad. Remember him? I remember. This would all be very cool if Morty wasn't busying himself by becoming a tyrant. Now, there's no Primarch free of their fair share of atrocities, so it's better just to measure by degree, and this douchebag did it constantly. He was of the opinion that killing a tyrant by any means necessary was always the correct option, and those means were often, you guessed it, more nerve gas. Here's the funny thing about chemical weapons. Yeah, yeah, they'll probably kill who you want dead, but they're also going to disproportionately affect the population en masse, you stupid dick. Look, all I have to say to this point is, if a revolutionary that isn't grossly incompetent and hypocritical sounds like something you want, you aren't looking for Morty. You want Corvus Corax of the Raven Guard. Uh, so, uh, you know, go check out that video. Anyway, this was another of many bounding steps down the road of hypocrisy. Now that you know where everyone stands, let's get to the primetime moments of Captain Fuck Knuckle and his shit brigade. Moving quickly to him joining Horus and betraying the Emperor, here's a little how that conversation went down. Ring ring. Hey there, Morty. You know how I'm basically the only brother that likes you because you're a complete asshole that regularly gasses civilian population centers? Yeah. Well, Dad's a wizard, so we gotta swear fealty to four magical gods with clearly nefarious intentions aiming to rule humanity in order to fight him. Sound good? Yeah. So can I count on you to come with me and these wizards to bomb innocents and the loyal members of our own legions with flesh-devouring viruses? Yeah. Fantastic, but uh, just in case we were at a misunderstanding anywhere in here, you're coming with me even though you hate both magic and villainous rulers. I'm surprised it took so little convincing for you to murder the people that look up to and love you, but thanks. Yeah. Ah, yes, that's right. My apologies. I forgot for a second that you were a complete mental incompetent, devoid of honor, only truly beholden to your own selfish desires. Yeah. And uh, that's about the long and short of it. After he murders his own men and innocent civilians, he goes to talk with Jagatai Khan on the surface of a recently burned out Prospero in efforts to turn him traitor. That went a little something like this. Uh, Morty, what the fuck is going on out there? Why is everybody pissing their pants and blowing up my phone? Well, well, Dad's mean, and we're gonna fight him. My brother in Christ. First of all, who the fuck is we? And, wait, wait a minute, are you... Buddy, are you crying right now? What happened? Me, me, H Horace, and the two blood-soaked lunatics, the other asshole, and the pathological liars. And we're gonna go kill Dad, cause he's a tyrant. And we're gonna, we're gonna rule the galaxy together. And it's gonna be, it's gonna be nice. Are you, oh, are you fucking stupid? Why am I asking? Of course you are. Uh, are you gonna make me explain this? Oh, dear God, you're going to make me explain why it's dumb as shit, aren't you? Okay, I think I have a Dr. Seuss book about this for you somewhere on the ship. Just like, just give me five. We're different. We're different people. We're not the same. Everyone's saying we're the same, but we're not the same. People like the Emperor and people like Sanguinius. Sanguinius. First of all, wipe your nose. That's... It's gross. Here, just t tissue. And fix that. And, uh, being at odds with the penultimate altruist is probably a very good sign that you're on the wrong side. Is Vulcan with you guys? No. Okay, look, if you've got Sanguinius and Vulcan on one side, and then there's you over here, you're in the wrong. Okay? Well, whoa. 
we have Fogrim, and everyone likes Broski, Broski, Broski. Um, first of all, wipe your nose again because it's running like a fountain. And last I heard, he took Ferris's head off. I'm pretty sure that disqualifies him from the term everybody when we're talking about friendship. Not to mention that time I told him he'd get beaten like a rented mule if we ever threw hands, and I had to sit there and watch a single tear roll down that motherfucker's porcelain-skinned cheek. Yeah, well, well, Dad, Dad is still mean. The fuck, the fuck do I care if Dad is still mean? So is that bald midget over there screaming about boiling seas and burning galaxies that you're meat riding for? Uh, look, bud. You, you should get the fuck out of Dodge before I reduce you to Mongolian barbecue for bothering me and wasting this much of my time. They fought. Morty ran. No need to go too deep on that. Not too long after this did Morty let a demon come aboard his ship under the guise of it being a captive human. The demon would reveal to Morty that he was chosen to be the champion of Nurgle, and the following battle with said demon resulted in Morty using his innate psyker powers. We have to talk about Nurgle, so we'll just recognize and leave that as the full trifecta of hypocritical bullshit that it is. Nurgle is a very divisive figure for a lot of people for a handful of reasons. He's one of the four chaos gods, and he is completely disgusting, but he's also likely the most altruistic. His whole thing is that everything decays eventually, and he will care about you when it inevitably reaches your doorstep. However, he is also the embodiment of disgust and pestilence, and it's fucking gross. He claims to love his subjects unconditionally, but the very clear condition is you need to work for him and be a hideously mutated pile of fuck. I think if you need to turn toward an embodiment of the bubonic plague to have a friend, you have some serious introspection problems. I'm willing to bet most people would love and be around you if you took a fucking shower and weren't a dick all the time. That's not a very big list of demands. Go stand down range of a garden hose, stinky. Morty didn't do that, because that would assume the ever so smallest shred of personal accountability of which we have discussed he has none. Instead, on the way to the final battle of the Civil War, he found himself lost in the warp on the way to Terra. He got lost there because one of his captains murdered all the navigators, and Slapnuts over here found that completely reasonable because he said they still liked the Emperor and therefore couldn't be loyal. Which, by the way, he just made up. While the ship drifted, it was getting annihilated by a plague sweeping through it, pretty much exactly like what Wizdad beat young Morty over the head with. Obviously this was Nurgle's doing, and Morty was curled up in the fetal position again. He would give up, and Nurgle would transform him into a demon prince. There you have it, kids. He has become the pinnacle of everything he once hated. Better yet, he still hates all of that stuff fervently, and completely shirks the fact that he's the exact thing that he hates. Eventually, he gets to the fight on Terra, and we know the end result, but I suppose we can talk about Jagatai putting his ass on ice one more time. Couldn't hurt. Jagatai at the siege is currently in his flow state. Educating traders as to the philosophies of a good offense is the best defense. This leads him to a one-on-one -on -one confrontation with Morty. In the beatdown that follows, the Khan eats every last punch Morty can dish out in order to prove that he's always been a little bitch. The back and forth went something like this. Morty, you have become the pathetic failure I and everyone else always knew you to be. No, look at me. I'm so, I'm so big and strong now. The hell you are. This look is what happens when you get on your knees for the chaos gods and... What the fuck is that smell? Oh my, dude, can you smell... Wait. Oh my, it's you. Oh my, it's you. Oh, wait, why do you smell like that? How do you smell like that? Wait, no, 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 no. Don't open your mouth. Don't open your mouth. Your breath is horrid. Please, just, no, no, get downwind of me right now. Do not, no, it's like, it's like a pile of dead raccoons inside another bigger dead raccoon left on the sidewalk to bake for a month. Good lord, don't, no, no, do not, do not, don't you dare move up wind of me, you heinously putrid bitch. Oh, oh, oh I'm gonna throw up. 
and then he voluntarily impaled himself on his brother's scythe only to get close enough to cleave Morty's head from his body. In recent years, he's mostly been playing fodder, but we are able to see some more of his new abilities on display. He was the go-to villain for a while, but it mostly relegated him to becoming a punching bag. He was able to kill a leader of the Space Marines demon hunting wing, but it did not go too well for him in the end. There's a fellow who needs a storytime video all to himself, and his name is Kaldor Drago. As much as I'm not a fan of the methods in which the bureaucracy that commands them operates, game must respect game. Mr. Drago, in response to the death of his old master, kicked down Mortarian's front door, murdered his men without hesitation, and carved the name of his old master, Gerontian, or Geronitan, I believe it actually is, which is a lot of goddamn letters, right onto Mortarian's heart. Some people have problems with that. I personally say, who cares? It's Morty, let him be a jobber, but the reality is this. Demonically enhanced Primarchs, although definitely stronger than normal ones, have a back catalog of ways to beat them. Angron, Falgrim, Magnus, and Morty have easily manipulated emotions. Lorgar still can't fight. Perturabo remains to be seen, but he might break the mold. What I'm saying is, their deaths can be understandable because the game plan is always the same and it's already written down somewhere. Plus, I do have to say, he fared pretty well against Gilliman, but... Once again, he got knocked back just in the nick of time as everything with Gilliman happens. Oh, I think that's enough bullying for the galaxy's best worst hypocrite today. Look, if you're really big on the guy, hopefully he gets some charity wins thrown his way like Magnus did with the Space Wolves. But if he's the hill you're gonna die on, I'll say this much. A worm has more legs to stand on than someone jumping to Morty's defense here. He hates despots, psychers, traitors, and aliens as his core belief system. He is currently a treacherous despotic sorcerer beholden to an alien god. It doesn't make him layered, it makes him compromised morally to an unfathomable degree. I would be disappointed in him like I was in Fulgrim, but that would infer that before the downfall I held him in high regard at all, which would be patently false. If you enjoyed this, or even if you hated it, thanks for sticking around for so long. I refuse to let Ferris be forgotten, so I'm probably going him next, even if it only takes five minutes. Have a good night, stay safe, the rest of it. Thank you very much.